Airtable just released a brand new feature called Airtable CoBuilder with the promise that it allows you to create no-code apps instantly. In this video, I want to share some of the strengths and weaknesses of CoBuilder as we're just getting started with it. Hi, I'm Dan Lehman from AutomationHelpers.com, and we help companies like yours get automated with portals, apps, and integrations. Now, the first thing that I'll mention is that Airtable is not the first company to release a no-code app builder. In fact, we've talked about many of these developments on our channel. About a year ago, Software released their AI app generator. Noloco has really streamlined their onboarding experience because they optimize the metadata of your app to choose the right kinds of screens that fit with the tables that you have in your application. Frontly.ai is a relatively small player in the space, but they're doing incredible things with being able to create actual custom components within a page. And Bubble's been recently pushing the envelope on what can be done with AI generators as well. Let's check on the marketing side of this. I really like how they give samples that you can just click on to be able to see right away what some of these apps look like. Of course, we're going to spend some time trying our own prompts. They mention starting with a strong foundation, you can instantly create an app that connects and streamlines your most critical data, linking data between tables. So I'm really eager to see that. Some of these AI app generators aren't actually creating the relationships between tables. So this is a huge one. We can visualize with different views. The one thing that makes me laugh a little bit is this, don't worry about design best practices. Airtable CoBuilder has you covered. This statement I would consider partially accurate. As we dig in, I think you'll see some areas where they do include best practices, but there's a lot of areas to be improved as well. So let's click on try my own prompt. From here, you'll choose a workspace and you'll see some pills here at the top if you just wanna hover and click on any one of those. But let's go ahead and put in our own prompt. We want to create an invoice generator for a signage shop. Now, the reason I'm choosing an invoice generator is because there's a lot of technical peculiarities. I want to see how it handles junction tables. I want to see how it handles formulas. So we're specifically choosing something that might give it a little bit to chew on here. Now we can include some branding elements by putting in our company name and we can choose a color for this if we want to. So we'll change it to blue and then we can go ahead and press next. It's gonna take a second to think here. And so one of the things that I really like here is that it's generated a preview. We get the opportunity to change and modify this before it actually generates it. I think that's an advantage over some of the other AI app generators, which is just doing all the work and then it's done and you really don't get to provide any feedback. Now, looking at this, this created a lot of tables and you're gonna to have to decide if that's something that you need. So it's creating it in an interface first format we can see our different tables here. We have customers, products, invoices, payments, employees, suppliers, materials, and services. That's a lot of information to look at. Now I will say I've used the same exact prompt multiple times and every time it's giving me a new app. One time it generated three tables. This time it generated eight. So definitely if you're looking for consistency, I think you have to be even more specific about your prompt, but don't really expect that you're gonna get the same results two times in a row. So I actually don't care about a lot of these tables. The biggest thing I care about is that I want to sell multiple signs to a customer. So I really want this to trigger the construct of line items and junction tables. So I'm gonna be even more specific and say, create an invoice generator for a shop to sell multiple signs per invoice to my corporate clients. Let's see how this performs. Interestingly enough, providing more details actually leads to fewer entities or fewer tables that are being involved. So now it's recommending that we have invoices, signs, and clients. I like that this is simplified. However, because we only have these tables and we don't have anything for line items, we're still not really constructing this in a way where we're selling multiple signs per invoice. So let's go back again. Okay, so this time we're gonna say create an invoice generator for a shop that supports multiple line items for corporate clients. And hopefully this will do the trick. Let's press next. And here again, we have three tables. Now we have invoices. We do have line items and we have clients, but now we don't have products recommended. So let's see if we can add in products here and we'll press preview. And this is starting to look better because now we have our products. And then if we go into our line items, it looks like it's actually referencing those products and it's attached to those invoices. So this is looking better than it was before. But my concern in all of this is that if I wasn't already a database expert, would it have created the app I needed? No, it wouldn't have. And so this is one of those areas where if you were that owner of a sign shop, would you have used that language to create that app? Probably not. That's why it's so important to know the right kinds of questions to be asking. And if you don't ask the right kinds of questions, 
are you really getting those best practices? Let's keep moving on. We'll go ahead and create this app. And right off the bat, this looks really nice. We've got our interface. We've got our invoices. We have each of our tables. So we've got an invoice. We can see it's got a number. We could go ahead and open up our invoice if we want to see the invoice information. We could add an invoice. The button's already created here to make it easy to create a new one. It's created multiple pages and multiple views. So we've got a timeline of our invoices. We have a dashboard of our invoices. Now this, we can take a little bit of a closer look. Think about what kinds of metrics you would want to look at if you were tracking your invoices. So the total amount due over time, I think that's pretty relevant. I think looking at the total amount due by account, that makes a lot of sense. Here we've got our line items and we're looking at the different products. So maybe you wanna say, which are the most successful products that have been selling in our shop? Of course, we don't have a ton of demo data here, so it looks a little bit superficial, but I think overall, these are the right kinds of questions that we would want answered through our data. So while the dashboard's a little bit vanilla, I think this is a pretty good output in terms of what's available based on the data that we have. And then for our clients, we have an overview, our list of our clients, and we have a dashboard. Not a whole lot of useful information here, but again, we're not collecting a whole lot of information from our clients, so that is fine. We probably wouldn't need a dashboard in that case. Our line items, we've got description, quantity, price, product invoice. This looks good. We're gonna dig into the data and show why this isn't quite a right fit, but from appearances sake, it looks pretty good. And then we've got our products, which are the different signs. Kind of cool how they're generating or at least linking to some images. I've generated several of these and they're using kind of the same stock type photos for a lot of them. So you're going to need to replace it, but it's helpful to see and get a visual sense of what this might look like. And then we have a products dashboard as well. So overall, I really love that Airtable is now really committing to this interface first approach. It's the first thing that you see when you're creating your custom application. I think for the purposes of talking about the underlying data, let's go ahead and click into our data and get into the table structure itself. But that interface first approach is going to be really good for beginners. Okay, now we've got our table. So the big thing we wanna check on here is did it actually create a junction table? Now, the reason we need a junction table is because we are selling multiple products to our clients. And to do so, we need to have a quantity of those products. So we couldn't put quantity on the actual products table because customer A might buy one widget and customer B buys three widgets. And so that's not a property of the products. That's why we need to have what we could call invoice products or invoice lines or line items. This is our junction table where we have a quantity and then the price and the product. So in terms of the construction of this, is this set up the right way? Well, let's check. We wanna edit this. We can see that we don't allow linking to multiple records. So we've got a many to one relationship with our products table, spot on, this is great. Next thing we wanna do is take a look at our invoices. And again, we're only linking to a single invoice so this is a properly constructed junction table. And that's really exciting because that we haven't seen in many of the other AI app generators, actually creating more complex kinds of relationships between the tables. So that to Airtable's claim about design best practices is doing a pretty good job here. But now let's talk about where this falls short a little bit. So we've got our quantity, which is a field that we would want to be able to manually enter a quantity on. But the price, this isn't something where we would typically want to just have to enter a price because we have a whole product catalog here. And for our product catalog, each of those items has a price. So unless we're doing some sort of override or discount, we don't want the user to have to manually enter that price. That kind of defeats the whole purpose of having this invoice generator. So instead of this currency field, what would we typically expect? Well, this is where we would want to make a lookup. So let me just call this price lookup. Let's find a lookup field. We're going to choose our product table and then our field. Here's where we're going to choose that price. Let's go ahead and create it. So now this price is actually coming from our products table. That doesn't require us to manually enter the price. And then we'd wanna be able to update essentially the subtotal for that line item. So we'd create a new field, we'll call it subtotal. And then we're going to create a formula here. And this is where we take the quantity and multiply this by the price which is going to be our new lookup field. When we create that, we could quickly just change this to a currency format and we'll save that. 
So now if we were to change the quantity here and we put in five, it's going to dynamically update that subtotal price for that line item. Now, if we take a look at the invoices table, do we really want to manually type in the total amount due in this currency field? No, that doesn't really make any sense. Here again, we'd probably create a subtotal and find a roll up. And then we'd look to our line items and we'd roll up our subtotal and create that. And then here, this would total up all of those line items. So I go through this exercise just to show you that Airtable's on the right track. It's creating the right tables. It's creating the right relationship structures between things if you're very vocal and specific about what you need, but it's still not really giving you the fully functioning output that you'd expect. So from my observation so far, it seems like CoBuilder is not creating formula fields and it's also not creating automations for you. Automations I'd kind of expect, but given that you can actually generate formulas with AI already with Airtable AI, I thought that it might be possible for it to be able to actually output a formula. So this is something that I would expect in future iterations of CoBuilder that we might be able to see in the product. Let's try to create another app and see how it performs. This time we're going to create a project management app for SaaS implementations. And this time let's just take everything that it recommends. So here we have projects, we've got a projects timeline and Kanban. We have tasks, which look like they are tied to projects and tied to milestones and tied to time logs and tied to issues. Wow, there's really a lot of linked relationships going on here. Milestones we have tied to projects and tasks. Team members, we have a table of the actual people. That's kind of an interesting choice. This is something that we do a number of times when we're trying to extend on the users table, or maybe we have people who aren't Airtable users that we want to assign to things. But it's kind of curious given Airtable's approach of wanting everybody to be an internal user, that this is their approach for resource assignment. We have our clients, resources, we have time logs, which are tied to the team members and the tasks and the projects, and we have issues as well. So do you need this many tables? Uh, it kind of depends on. Sometimes when we do builds, we have time logs that are a separate table so that we can have multiple time logs tying to a task. That can work. But then the interesting part about this is, is that they're manually linking the time logs also to a project. You think this would be a lookup so that the task is tied to the project. Why would you be manually linking to the project as well? Or the team members, again, you've got tasks and you assign them to the team members who aren't users, they're just records in this table. Well, then you're really not getting the full functionality of a project management system without actually having the assigned to the user of that. I'd also expect to see that they're using a Gantt view. Yes, there's a timeline, but there's really no interdependency of the tasks. And if we go into our data, it's very clear that Airtable's taking that interface first approach, which I think is a great idea, but I just came here to show you that they're not creating these additional views in more of the standard or kind of the older Airtable layout where we're creating them here. You know, if we come into tasks, we're not seeing that timeline or Gantt view of those dependencies. So if we just take a quick look at the schema here for our tables, you know, does it make sense to have a time log that ties directly to a task and you have to manually update that project? Really, I think this could be so much better optimized. So it's like, yes, it has tables, tables that make sense in project management. And yes, it creates relationships that taken at face value could make sense for project management, but is it really optimized for project management? That's where it becomes a little bit more dicey. So to sum it up, here's my take on the strengths and weaknesses of where Airtable CoBuilder is currently at. The biggest value in all of this, I think, is that it's helping users get onboarded with a database first mindset. I can't tell you how many new Airtable users still come to Airtable and they treat it pretty much like a spreadsheet. It's like a pretty spreadsheet that has different views and getting them to think about the different objects, the different tables in the database and how they relate to each other is a huge win. I also think for some people who have been using Airtable for an extended period of time and they're kind of in the old way of thinking where Airtable is all about views and now Airtable is all about interfaces, it helps a lot of people bridge that gap to start to think about their apps as a holistic app experience which is driven primarily from the interface. And then I also think it's awesome that CoBuilder can handle things like junction tables. 
In the middle of the road, I would consider dashboard creation and view selection is, you know, it's okay. They're choosing okay views, but there's still a lot of things not tapped into like Gantt views, for example. And then in terms of the weaknesses, I'm really not seeing anything in terms of formulas, but more importantly, there's just no business logic, which is really at the heart of creating any kind of business process flow inside of Airtable. And then we're also not seeing support for automations. This, I think, would be one of the trickier features to implement, but who knows? We might get that in the future. Curious to hear about your experience so far with Airtable CoBuilder. If you have any questions about your own Airtable build, don't hesitate to reach out to our website at automationhelpers.com, where we're offering free 30-minute consultations.